the investiture ceremony takes place the day after the vigil, permeated by an atmosphere of prayer and recollection of the previous evening. As for the vigil, the procession makes its entrance. However, for the investiture, it is of note that the investees are no longer part of the entrance procession, but of the liturgical procession. The procession is introduced by the lay master of ceremonies, followed by the knight or dame with the standard of the lieutenancy, knights or dames with the section and local delegation banners. Then come the members of the grand magisterium, guest lieutenants, and representatives of other lieutenancies, as well as representatives of other orders, if present. Closing the procession are the members of the Council of the Lieutenancy, the section presidents, local delegates, and the priests, religious knights, religious dames, knights, and dames. Once the participants in the entrance procession have taken their places, the liturgical procession begins, introduced by the thurible, incense boat, and crucifer, followed by two candlesticks. Then the investees take their positions, followed by the religious knights and religious dame investees, and the priest investees. Then the lieutenant of the place, the vice governor general of the area, the governor general, and the lieutenant general, the latter if present. The last part of the liturgical procession is introduced by the priest or deacon with the gospel, the priests taking part, the priors of the local delegation and section, the master of ceremonies, and the order's spiritual assistant, the bishops, the grand prior of the lieutenancy, and finally the celebrant, followed by the ecclesiastical master of ceremonies, the liturgical service attendants, and the other knights and dames attending the ceremony. The members of the procession take their places beside the altar. Looking from the altar to the right, the governor general, the local lieutenant, and the section president take their places in the first row. In the second row are the delegates and priors of the place. On the left, if present, are the members of the grand magisterium and the guest lieutenants, followed by the members of the council of the lieutenancy. The ceremony begins with the greeting of the grand master or grand prior followed by a brief introduction to the ritual and the singing of Veni Creator Spiritus. At the end, the Chancellor of the Lieutenancy, or a deputy person, reads the decree with which the Grand Master appoints the knights and dames who receive the investiture. The investees, called one by one by name, are arranged in rows in the space in front of the altar. Each investee carries a cape and neck cross on his or her left arm, together with a small sheet of paper with his or her name and last name. The celebrant begins the dialogue with the candidates, asking them if they are ready to take on the commitments associated with the ideal of the order. Then, one by one, they approach the altar, giving the cape to one of the master of ceremonies, who passes it to the lieutenant. With the neck cross and name sheet, the candidate advances towards the celebrant, hands the name sheet and neck cross to the celebrant, and kneels to receive the investiture. Turning to the candidate, the Grand Master places the processional cross on his right shoulder and says, I constitute and proclaim you knight or dame of the order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If the one presiding is not the Grand Master, he says, by virtue of the mandate conferred upon me, I constitute and proclaim you knight or dame of the order of the Holy Sepulchre of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. At the end of this moment, the celebrant hands over the neck cross, pronouncing the formula, 
receive the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it protect you and be for you a sign of honor and pledge of eternal glory. At this point, the new knight goes to the lieutenant for the imposition of the cape and to the governor general for the welcome greeting in the order and the handing over of the gospel. The same happens with the dames who are given the cape and mantilla, who then proceed in the same way to the governor general to be received into the order. After the investiture of the knights and dames, if present, the religious knight investees and religious dame investees are accompanied to the altar. After the act of investiture with the processional cross, which the celebrant places on the right shoulder, the celebrant gives the religious first the neck cross, which the master of ceremonies affixes to him, and then the white scarf with an emblazoned red cross to the religious knight, and the black shawl with an emblazoned red cross to the religious dames. The last act of investiture is that of the clergy investees if present, after the investiture formula which the celebrant pronounces by placing the processional cross on the shoulder of the investee priest, the celebrant places the mozzetta and the neck cross on him. If there are bishop investees, they are first given the neck cross and then the stole of the order and the insignia of rank. The new member then goes to the lieutenant and the governor general who welcome him or her into the order. Once the investiture is over, the celebrant recites the concluding prayer. Afterwards, the new knights and dames who had repositioned themselves in the rows in front of the altar after having individually received the investiture, resume their places in the pews for the start of Holy Mass. The celebrant takes off the cope, puts on the stole and chasuble, preparing for the Eucharistic celebration, and kisses the altar. Holy Mass then proceeds in a regular manner with the introductory rites, Liturgy of the Word, and Liturgy of the Eucharist. During the Eucharistic Liturgy, the knights carrying the candlesticks and thurible position themselves in front of the altar. At the consecration, the cross-bearing knight, the knight or dame with the standard of the lieutenancy, the knights or dames with the section and local delegation banners raise the cross, the standard, and the banners until the end of the consecration. Communion and the concluding rites of Holy Mass follow. In conclusion, the lay master of ceremonies invites the assembly to rise for the prayer of the knight and dame, which is led by the highest ranking lay office present, the lieutenant general, governor general, or the local lieutenant. The concluding procession then takes place generally introduced by the thurible, the incense boat, the crucifer, and two candlesticks, followed by the knight or dame with the standard of the lieutenancy, the section banners, and local delegation banners. This is followed by the lieutenant and, if present, the vice governor general of the place, the governor general, the lieutenant general, the concelebrating priests, the priors of the local delegation and section, the master of ceremonies and spiritual assistant of the order, the bishops and grand priors of the lieutenancy and the celebrant. Finally, the ecclesiastical master of ceremonies, the liturgical assistants, the knights and the dames.